Okay, I'm actually pretty excited tonight. Um, probably a little bit more excited than I should be. Uh, I'm going to geek out on you for a minute, and we're going to talk about some advanced scripting methods. Um, actually, there's, you know, right. This is only going to cover one advanced scripting method, right? But there are several methods you can call. So I'm, I'm saying methods. Anyway, um, uh, I've already created a uh, an initial scripting video. So if you if you need some help. Uh, knowing how to script your objects and, and what that's all about, then go ahead and watch that one first. This one's going to assume that you know everything that you need to know. Um, but what I am going to do is I'm going to run you through just a just the tiniest bit refresher of the scripting syntax. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna explain it at all. This is just to kind of set the stage for this one to kind of remind you. So I'm here in my recipe database, um, one of the test databases in my lab, and um, I'm using the, the, the SQL PowerShell uh, mini shell here, but it works the same way in, in PowerShell proper, right? I'm just doing this for, for ease of the video. So for right now, I'm in the recipe database, and if I do a dir on that, then I can pull up tables there, so I can say cd tables, good. Now if I do a dir on that, good, I get a list of my tables. Okay, so from right here, I need to script my schema. Okay, that's that's the whole point of this. I'm gonna script my gonna script my tables. So the way I would do that is say get child items and pipe that to the for each loop. Give me a curly bracket and then there call the script method for each one. And remember if you don't understand all this syntax then go watch the, the other video and you'll be fine. So I come here, I hit that, and I get my script, right? But there's a lot of stuff in here I may not want. See, like right here I've got on primary. I may not want the file group in there. It doesn't say anything at all about, um, about it doesn't have any database use statements. It doesn't have any with exist statements. Because, you know, if you go into the GUI, right, you get all these options. So if I were to come in here and say tasks and generate scripts, and this is in the my GUI, right? Come right here, recipe. I get all these options right here. I'll expand that for you. So I get all these guys right here, right? Script login, script drop, um, uh, dependent objects, uh, include if not exists. I get all these things in here that should be options in here as well. And as it turns out, they are. And this is what makes it advanced, right? You just need to know how to get at them. Well, for this, you need to go to the SMO library for that. Um, now, there are a couple different ways to do this. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm only going to show you one way, but I honestly think this is the easiest way. So even if, you ne even if I never get around to making the other video, or if you never learn the other way, this way will work just fine. So first of all, we're going to load the .NET assembly. So... That's going to be load with partial name. Okay, that's our load call. Now, none of this is uh, is case sensitive. Um, I'm only using case to make it easier to read. So now we hit enter. Okay, we get the we get the GAC true right here. So this right here is an indication that it's been loaded, and it's telling you where it's been loaded from. If it hadn't been loaded, then you would get an error right now, okay? So now what we need to do is we need to set a variable to an object type of scripting options. So if I come here and go, I'll just call it S for script, or SO for scripting options. How's that? Scripting options equals... It would, help if that actually said equals equals new object and then you give it the object name and scripting options uh, what did I do wrong Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, 
There it is. Okay. See, it's always something simple as that. Micro soft. There we go. Okay. So now all I have to do is set my options. Now, if I want to know what options there are available, now that I've got uh, the variable SO cast as a scripting options variable, as a scripting options object, now I can go see what objects I have available to me, what methods and properties I have available to me. So for that, you would say at SO and pipe it to get member and get ready. There's all my properties. So now you see script data, script drop, script owner, script schema, um, uh, you know, encoding, uh, enforce scripting options. Uh, you got index, different index options here. Include if not exists. Um, you've got uh, DRI stuff in here. So you've got all the other stuff that you had in there before, right? Allow system objects, um, clustered indexes. So uh, you got header information in here somewhere. Uh, DRI with no check, and so on and so on, right? Um, include, da include database role memberships, um, include headers. So we're going we're gonna to set a couple of these things, right? Let's go ahead and, and look at our script again. Should be one up. There we go. So we look at our script, and what would we like to take out? Well, since I can't be assured that the... Um, that the database on the new server, the database is gonna is gonna be in the right context. Let's go ahead and add a database context to our script, right? So that's the easiest place to start. So I'm gonna come up here, and what would that be called? It's gonna be include database context right here. So. In order for me to do this, I'm going to have to say .so And again, this isn't case sensitive. I'm just doing this to, to make it easier to read. Now, you can use any number of equals zero. I mean, equals one for true or zero for false. You can use the, the built-in true variable. Okay, I prefer just one and zero because I'm a simple kind of guy. Okay, so I've set the, uh, the include database context equal to true. And if you look up here, include database context property is off the screen. Fine. Uh, okay, anyway. So if I come here and say bring back my scripting object. Now, in the, in the parentheses... I just have to pass it the scripting options. Okay? So I've got get child object, I pipe it to a for each. Uh, for each one of these, the built in variable, I'm going to call the scripting method, and I'm going to pass it in the scripting options that I have stored in this scripting option variable. There we go, and you notice now it says use recipe, use recipe, use recipe. So include database context, true. Excellent. So that's number one, right? Let's come here and let's look at something else we want to do. Um, let's get rid of, here, let me show you up here. Let's get rid of uh, the on primary. I don't really like that. Um, you know, my next, it may be a test database and I may not need that, right? And which one is that? Here it is. It's under the properties, no file group. So I can just set this again. So I've got include database context equals one, no file group I want to equal one. No file group equals one. So I've set that and I make my same call again. I just call the GCI, uh, the get child item pipe it to for each. Uh, for each one of these I call the scripting method and I pass it in the options which now includes 
the no file group and you see that my file group here on the end of each one of these has disappeared. And you can do that for every single one of these properties. You can set any one of these properties you want to. Um, that's actually pretty wicked. Okay, sorry about that. I had to go again. Uh, let's see, where was I? Um, I'll tell you what. Let's just start all this over. Um, one of the things I need to show you is, okay, we were setting properties, I remember now. Um, one of the things I need to show you is how to check the properties. Uh, let's see what we've done so far. We've, uh, we've loaded the .NET library. We've uh, set the, the scripting. Uh, we've set a new variable, uh, $SO, to the scripting options. And then we started setting options, right? And then we ran a couple scripts and saw those options come across. Okay, now let's let's see how we can check what those options are. So um, if I do this, I'm gonna get the options that are available. Okay, these are all of the options that are available, but it doesn't really say what they are. You know what they're set to. For that, you need to actually just print the variable scripting object. And here we have true, 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 false, 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 right? So you can see, let's see which one are some of these that we've set. Um, Y'all remember which ones we've set? Uh, well, let's just pick one instead of trying to find one, because I don't remember which ones we set. Um, so let's uh, go with DRI all. You notice that's set to false, right? So... Uh, with that one set to false, so we've done equals, let's see, it's false now, let's turn it on. So now, if I go back and look at it, it's set to true. And I can set it again, oops, back to zero, and look at it, and it's set back to false again. But let's say that I've got a specific one that I'm working with, and I don't really want to look through every one of these, right? I mean, because that gets a little... Uh, ah, no file group. There's one that we were doing before. I remember that. Right there, no file group. So instead of having to, to look through the list for that every time, we can just go no file group, and it'll give you right there. So <clears throat> you can check again. I can come here and say no file group equals zero. Right, and then run it up to no file group, and I see it turn back to false again. So that's how you can tell what the options are, and I'm pretty sure you could even run through all of these and uh, programmatically set them to what you want based off of some other criteria, right? Um, which is actually kind of what we're about to get into. I'm going to transition here. We've, we've done the basics here, right? Now one of the things you're going to notice is you've got a script data right there. And so if I say, oops, let me come up here. There we go. Script data equals one. And then script data equals one. So now, if I do that, I see script data right here equals true. And if I come in here, and uh, I don't think I can find that again, so bear with me while I rewrite this line. There we go. Now if I do this, okay, this is what I get when I do a script data. I get um, an uh, an error that says that it doesn't support that method. Now, to be honest with you, I haven't yet figured out how to get it to script the data like it does in the, in the GUI. If you go into the GUI and you do that, it'll script all the objects and then it'll go down and script the data. So I haven't really figured out how to script the data yet, but I wanted to show you this um, so that you didn't try it on your own. Maybe if, if you know the problem, then write it in, uh, write me and I'll, and I'll make a video on it. And if I figure it out first, then I'll write a video on it for you. But there is one other caveat here, and which one was it? It was uh, script drops. That's what it was. Let me see what that's set to. So, 
Okay, that's set to false. Now, if I go... Okay, I got distracted again. Um, that's why this site is called Midnight DBA, because I tried to sneak in this video here real quick, and I keep getting, uh, getting called away for like a couple hours at a time. Um, okay, we were about to do the script drops, and it's false. So let's go ahead and set script drops. Yeah, let me just do Oops, okay. Let's try this now. Okay, script drops equals 1. Okay, so it's set to true. Now, I think I can find, there we go. Oops, oh, I gotta turn that other one back off, don't I? There we go. Script data equals zero. There we go. That'll really do it. Okay, so you see, when you use the script drops, um, It only scripts the drop. For some reason, it doesn't script the uh, it doesn't script the schema, even though script schema is set to true. I think it's set to true. Let's inspect that real quick. This will. Yeah, it's set to true. So even though script schema is set to true, uh, script drops um, only scripts the drop statement. Now. It'll also script if you use, uh, if you put uh, if exists, use uh, if exists, or if not exists, then uh, it'll also script that as well. But it won't script the schema as long as you've got the drop statement. So what, you, what you're really going to have to do, and this is, this is really only for text files, right? I mean, you're, you're probably going to mostly do this to a text file or something of the like, right? So... <clears throat> In this case, here, let me go ahead and, uh, and find a good location for this. Hold on, I'm going to pause it real quick, and I'll be right back with a good location. Okay, I'm back. Okay, now we've got, uh, let's take this whole thing that we just did. Where are you? There you are. And pipe it to outfile, j colon, backslash, backslash, um, Okay, so I got that, and if you look here, I've got my script right there, and it comes up, and I've got my use and my drop statement, right? So all you got to do, really, if you want, oops, sorry about that, uh, don't save. So all you got to do, if you want this to be, um, to have drop and schema, stop that, delete that, okay. All you have to do is use the append and then just change it in between. So uh, if I had a script here, let's go ahead and recreate that again. I'll do this. There we go. Then I'll do this. Script data. It's got to be in here somewhere. Script schema. Well, I'll just do this. Script drops equal to zero, and then I'll script it again with the append flag, and that should give me what I want. I'll bring it up over here now. There we go. So now I've got all my drop statements above, and then I've got my create statements down here. And then you can just build scripts that way. So I've got all, and, and I actually kind of like this. Um, one of the things I like about this is if I need to turn off a table drop, then all of the table drops are up here, and I can turn them off in one place. Um, it doesn't really matter if you drop a table, then create a table, then drop a table, then create a table. You know, if you're going to drop them all to create them, then go ahead and drop them all. It doesn't matter. So um, anyway, that's, the, uh, that's uh, some advanced scripting options for you. Um, that's how to use, that's how to pass it parameters, and... Um, as soon as I get on the, uh, as soon as I figure out how to do the script data, um, I'll teach you how to tie that in. And uh, I'll go ahead and stop the video here, and good luck.